Thank you, Doc Jonna. I want to tell you the story of our group's COVID-19 journey and how our organization's values were put to the test from the very beginning. The first COVID-19 case in the entire state of Oregon came to Kaiser Permanente System on February 28th at our Westside Hospital. Suddenly, the global pandemic was not only here in our state, it was on our very own doorstep. We knew this would quickly become a healthcare crisis on a scale we had never seen. So why should COVID-19 matter to a dental group? We're unique in the United States in having a dental group of our size and indeed unique as the one and only Kaiser Permanente region to have a dental group at all. That uniqueness comes with a really amazing upside. We routinely get to work hand in hand with our physician colleagues because we're caring for a common medical and dental member since our group's inception almost 50 years ago. Unlike nearly any dental practice in the nation, for nearly a decade, we've had access to Kaiser Patient Electronic Health Record, and we've been using a fully integrated medical and dental health record in our system since 2016. Suffice it to say, our dentists do more than just care for your teeth. They are woven into the broader healthcare team at Kaiser Permanente here in the Pacific Northwest. As you may remember, when COVID-19 arrived in the Portland area, we quickly experienced a shortage of personal protective equipment, or PPE. The countries that had usually supported the supply were locked down. Our dental group quickly realized we had the equivalent of gold in our dental stock room thousands of masks, gloves, and gowns that could be repurposed to the higher medical needs. We weren't the only health care system facing these large PPE shortage. We were all in uncharted territory with no playbook. The expression, flying the plane while you're building it, completely applied. It was an all hands on deck to build a playbook, re configure our protocols and processes that had guided how we practiced up until now. We were learning more and more about COVID on the fly and incorporating or challenging the latest and at times conflicting federal, state, and local guidelines. We had to trust in our abilities, training, and collective healthcare knowledge to guide us. Our immediate decision at the end of February was for the greater good of our broader community, while not interrupting important emergency care for our KP Dental members. We quickly pivoted to figuring out how to contract from 21 to just four dental emergency offices and transfer most of our PPE supplies to our KP hospitals so they could be prepared for the anticipated surge in COVID cases during March. This was well before any Oregon or Washington state executive orders that came later that month, which required dentists and other healthcare providers to transfer PPE to hospitals and to close only to emergency care. We also had to figure out a plan for retaining more than 150 dentists, specialists, and denturists who would be idle for really an unspecified period of time. Many of our workers are supporting young families while digging out from under huge dental school loans. We made the decision early on to keep everyone on payroll, despite the fact that we would be contracting to about 15% of our prior capacity. Part of our rationale for this was practical. Hiring, training, and retaining a talented professional is expensive and replacement costs are significant, but it was also the right thing to do. We are still small enough that our colleagues still feel like family and you help out family in an emergency. Most of all, we consider it an investment in our future because our members, dentists, and other professional staff are our group's future. We also had a tremendous responsibility to figure out how to keep everyone as safe as possible during a hopefully once in a century pandemic. 
That includes a cohort of our dentists providing now very high risk emergency care for our oral surgeries, extractions, and root canals to help our patients get out of pain. Office configurations were changed to allow for greater spacing and a cleaning schedules were accelerated. I asked our entire professional administrative staff to go remote for the first time. This is the team that really oversees and helps manage the business. We needed to be able to sustain our business continuity of the group practice while keeping the staff safe. We bent all of our business models and had to just trust it would all work out. For our dentist, we created two week rotations that would be as equitable as possible. Each two weeks rotation consisted of about one third of the dentist providing in-person emergency care. The next third would be providing virtual triage care by phone or video. This was something we hadn't planned for our future state, but we had to immediately stand up this model as the COVID-19 cases grew and our contraction kept us to four offices until May. The final one third of our dentists would be in self-quarantine or redeployed to help our medical colleagues with direct COVID testing and making care calls to the most vulnerable members in our system to check on their social needs and ensure they were getting access to the medical and dental care they needed when they couldn't come physically into our offices. These were examples of our dentist playing a role not at all common for dentists outside Kaiser Permanente, but it's been something we've been forging as part of our medical dental integration efforts for years now. It was the right thing to do to help our medical colleagues while serving our common Kaiser Permanente members. It took us three phases and over four months to get all 21 offices and services back to the current normal which is definitely still not normal with social distancing and having to space out appointments to keep everyone as safe as possible. It was a monumental task to upgrade all 21 dental offices with HEPA filters and hospital grade air purifiers and quickly learn and operationalize many of the other ways of reducing the small droplets that are aerosolized and remain in the air when you're using high-speed dental instruments. Crisis has a way of clarifying the challenges and resources and focusing on the right path forward. It helped everyone reframe what was most important, serving our members in the safest way possible. Previous barriers to revising the classic dental office layout to telehealth and virtual care whether regulatory or technical, completely crumbled. Everyone was uncomfortable with the unknown, yet we all embraced new ways of working, forging ahead with virtual dentistry for the first time in our practice history. Like others, we are now figuring out how to sustainably build these virtual models in our practice for the future. Our dentists cross further into medical than ever before, which helps our medical and the broader community. And I'm most proud to say we retained all our dentists and professional administrative staff throughout this crisis. No one was laid off due to revenue or business pressures from the COVID pandemic. Thanks for letting me share our story of our COVID journey with you. We are so profoundly thankful to be part of the Portland B Corp community. You're continually inspiring us and your ideas help evolve our organization now let's pivot to our keynote speaker today, Kali Thorne Ladd. Kali is a social entrepreneur who is a passionate advocate for equity and educational transformation with a background from teacher to program manager to policymaker over the last 18 years. After spending four years as the educational director for former Mayor Sam Adams, Kali pursued establishing and co-founding Caruse PDX, a nonprofit dedicated to closing opportunity and achievement gaps for historically marginalized children. In May 2012, 
Colleen won election to the Portland Community College Board of Directors, where she served for seven years and is immediate past chair. In 2016, Colleen was appointed by Governor Brown to the Early Learning Council of Oregon, where she also currently serves. In addition to her national work, Colleen has worked overseas in South Africa, teaching and supporting the development of two community-based projects, a community library and a woman-owned bakery. Kali was recognized in 2018 Women of Influence in Portland Business Journal and was the previous award winner for Portland 40 Under 40 recognition. Kali resides in North Portland with her husband and two children. She received her bachelor's degree in elementary education and psychology from Boston College and earned a master's degree in educational policy from Harvard University. Please welcome Kali Thornlad.